going on? What's happening? How you doing? Welcome to episode number eight of Airing It Out. I am your host, Jamie Arrington. If this is your first time listening to this podcast, every week we talk to somebody in sports or entertainment, or just in the business of either, find out their involvement in sports growing up, what, where they've been, what they've been through, and where they're at now. We get them to spill the beans here each and every episode. If you missed last week's episode, it was probably the, well, I know it was the most listened to episode that we've had thus far. Uh, we're over a couple of thousand listens. We had Brittany Wagner. If you've watched the Netflix smash hit, the documentary series, Last Chance You, Brittany is the athletic academic advisor at East Mississippi Community College. And I just found out this past week that Last Chance You has been renewed for another season. So I guess next summer we'll get to see what happened with this season uh, if you don't keep up with them on the news. <laughs> Hopefully there's not any, uh, well, hopefully there are some fights and things like that because it made for extremely entertaining television. I've had a tough time watching Hard Knocks uh, after watching Last Chance U, but uh, I enjoy both. We have a, another guest with Mississippi Ties. I knew her when she was at Southern Miss. She was a cheerleader at USM, and she has gone on to become one of the biggest competitors on Master Chef Season 7, which you can watch now on Fox, there's new episodes coming. They, they took a break for the Olympics, but new episodes are coming this Wednesday night, August the 24th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. I'm sure it falls the same with Mountain and Pacific Time as well. <laughs> so be sure you check that out on Fox. My guest today from MasterChef Season 7. She's a sweetheart. You guys are going to really enjoy this one. Please welcome Chef Katie Dixon. All right, we are here with season seven Master Chef on Fox contestant Katie Dixon. How you doing today, Katie? I'm just doing great. Um, it's a beautiful day in in the Pine Belt. Well, how how has your life changed since you've gotten to be on Master Chef? Well, if anyone could ever tell me or any of my friends or family that I could have a crazier life than I had a year ago, I think they would have laughed because I've always been crazy, full speed, running in a hundred directions at all times. I think the difference is now I have to have a calendar and have it on my phone and on paper just to make sure I get everywhere that I'm supposed to be. Life is fun. Gosh, I'm, I'm living a dream right now. And um, I would just say it's super busy. I mean, but with all things that, that I love to do. So I'm, I'm definitely a blessed woman right now. You are from Brookhaven, Mississippi originally, if I'm not mistaken. I am. You were you've always been a very active person. I mean, you're very uh, always involved in sports, cheerleading, uh, basketball and the like. Did being involved in those things kind of shape who you are now? Absolutely. From from growing up just loving sports. I mean, I played T-ball as a as a 4-year-old to 5th and 6th grade peewee sports um and I wanted to play every sport, not just one. Um my dad was always the coach for peewee sports and then going into junior high and high school, I played I was very competitive. I'm the oldest of four children. And so to earn a little bit of attention from your parents, you know, it was almost like a competition back in the Newman household. Um, but yes, yeah, sports definitely 100% helped me um, become the competitor that I am now and helped me in the MasterChef kitchen. You know, it was through sports like basketball and, and cheerleading that, you know, you, you don't always have the perfect game. And, and I learned to be resilient and I learned to bounce back and to fight harder and stronger. And I think all those things that I learned from sports definitely um, helped me in, in my time in the MasterChef kitchen. When you, when you left high school, you actually played a little college basketball at Mississippi College. Tell us about the experience of playing uh, basketball at MC. Oh, the, the memories that I have from playing basketball at MC for Paul Allen Duke and just the friends that I made there are, are ones that bring definitely a smile to my face. Coming from a from small um, high school, um, Brickhaven Academy and stepping out into the big world at Mississippi College, even though it was a small private school, it seemed so big to me. And, and having a, a family that truly supported me at MC through the basketball team was absolutely amazing. Coach Coach Duke pushed me, um, you know, as hard as he could. And, and it was only to bring out greatness in me. And, and I felt the same way in the MasterChef kitchen. 
you know, Chef Ramsey doesn't want to push you to break you. He wants to push you to make you your best. And through playing basketball at NC, I learned to truly strive to become my best, whether it was through teammates or through my coach or through competitors or, um, you know, just fans. But my um, my basketball years at NC um, just bring back fun times, fun memories, only only positive things and to definitely, you know, who I am today. What What position did you play? I was point guard, and I was, if I can brag, I was actually um, freshman um, player of the year in our conference, so wow. that was definitely something that I, I look back on. I, I never was the, um, I was kind of the tenacious point guard. I, I was a, I was a fighter. I was, I was scrappy. I, I, I wasn't the one that was a high scorer. I, I like to get the most assists, and I like to, um, I like to have the most steals in a, in a basketball game, but um, I definitely was one that, I really supported my teammates. I wanted, I felt as a point guard to really bring out the best in my teammates, really created a better team. And um, through doing that, I tried to really learn their strengths and weaknesses and, and help my teammates um, become stronger players. So the Choctaws, um, you know, we would, we would have our best season. You know, you're, you're doing a lot of PR work now. You're doing a lot of events I've seen. And, you know, back in 2001, you actually won the, Miss Mississippi, uh, you won the Mississippi Miss Hospitality pageant. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Wow, um, Mississippi Miss Hospitality. I was a sophomore at, at Mississippi College playing basketball, and you know, college is expensive. I was the oldest of four children. My parents very middle class. Um, I was a hard worker both in basketball and in the classroom, and. I had an opportunity. The local chamber of commerce in Lincoln County, um, sweet little Miss Kay Burton, came to me with you know, asking me would I be interested in doing the local Miss Hospitality. So there was some great scholarship involved, and um, she just thought I would be a great representative for Brookhaven in Lincoln County. And I took her up on that. I did the local um, Lincoln County program, and I won that. I borrowed a dress for the state competition. I didn't think in a million years I would ever win the title of Mississippi's Miss Hospitality. And that night that I won, I mean, I was just in shock. I was excited. I mean, I was just elated. And um you go in and, you know, you have to sign your little contract for the year and everything. And I quickly realized that I really wouldn't be able to play college basketball and be the ambassador for the state of Mississippi promoting economics and tourism for the year and do both really well. Um, so at that point, um, USM gave me a full scholarship for being Mississippi's Miss Hospitality. And that's when I transitioned over to the University of Southern Mississippi. And um, Miss Hospitality for that year, Hattiesburg was so gracious to me. The people of Hattiesburg were so supportive. The university was so supportive. And I got to um, just live out a dream of traveling and seeing um, places I'd never been and visited. Um, I got to um, meet some wonderful people, people that definitely are role models still today in my life. You know, getting to speak in front of thousands of people um, at the New York City picnic um, for Mississippi Day or just things I look back on as Miss Hospitality that I know created um, a stronger Katie for me to be able to be my strongest in the Master Chef kitchen. It created um, for me not to have the nerves on interviews and um, when you had reporters talking to you and asking you questions. Definitely that past experience in this hospitality definitely molded me into a stronger individual in the kitchen. Now, while at Southern Miss, you were also a member of the co ed cheerleading squad. Um, I was. <laughs> th this is a point of debate with some people, and I don't even see why a lot of times, but do you consider cheerleading a sport? I absolutely consider it a sport, <laughs> and I can say that from being on both ends. I was I was a college basketball player, and I was a college cheerleader. Both require extremely different um, different um, athletic abilities, but both absolutely um, you have to be a competitor to um, to earn a spot on either collegiate team. I feel like you you have teamwork on each. You have hard hard work ethic on each. You have to be um, a team player on each and give a hundred percent to really succeed. And um, I most definitely think that that college cheerleading is a sport. And you probably see more injuries as well. You, you know, actually you, you do. I had, I have more injuries related to cheerleading <laughs> than I did to basketball. Um, I, I can attest to that. And let's see how many years it's been now, 11 years, I guess, since I've graduated from, from USM. Um, I definitely now, I can feel the injuries more now than I did back then. But, yes, I, I was lucky that I didn't have too many injuries, but I, but I definitely did have a few more from cheerleading than I did from, from basketball. Were you on a, a squad that competed at Nationals while you were at Southern Miss? 
Um, I was. When I look back at, like, my life story and the opportunities I've had through basketball at um, MC and through Miss Hospitality and then getting to cheer at USM, I'm I'm a blessed young woman. I, I, I really am. And it, I'm glad that I realized that. Um, but I am. The people um, through each of those opportunities truly have helped create who I am as an individual now. And I hope to be able to share the things that they have taught me through each of those experiences to the youth of Mississippi and to the women of Mississippi of all ages. Now, you graduated in 2005. So, so what I have, did. What have you been up to the past 10 years? Oh, wow. A whirlwind. Um, well, I graduated with a degree in business and marketing from USM, and I worked for Pfizer. I was a pharmaceutical rep, and then um, I actually got married um, the – March before um, I graduated in May from USM. So I guess I should start with I got married, graduated, worked for um, Pfizer, and now I have two little girls, one that just started kindergarten yesterday, um, and then my oldest, Stevie Kate. She, They both love to cook with me in the kitchen. Um, oh, wow, what have I not done? I'm a personal trainer um, at Anatomy, and I also have a business called Anchored Soul Fit, where we do nutrition and workouts online. Um, And then I'm a chef at Shine Cafe in Hattiesburg. So between kids and husband and seeing my parents and spending time with my friends and spending most of my day cooking, I I stay pretty busy between all that. And now I'm even crazier because I'm doing PR events and traveling and speaking at different things, which truly brings me back to my hospitality days, which I love. I've forgotten that I could still I could still do that. (laughs) (laughs) Where did you learn how to cook? Well, growing up in Brook Haven, um, my grandparents were farmers, and on the weekends, we would go out to my grandparents' farm, James and Olivia Newman, and we would um, go out to the farmland with my grandfather, and once we went out there and checked on all the cows, and we got fresh milk, and we got the eggs, and we went to the garden, we would bring things in for my grandmother, and she would cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner every weekend. My other siblings were the ones that wanted to... They were hot once they came inside from from doing all that work out with my grandfather. But the the true passion of mine came in with bringing those things into my grandmother and then seeing her create such wonderful southern dishes. So from very early age, I, um, I enjoyed going out to my grandparents' farm and learned the farm aspect from my grandfather and the cooking aspect from my grandmother. I have to say I don't cook exactly like my grandmother. <laughs> She's a very southern, southern, southern cook, and I like to take – inspiration from travel and put a healthy southern spin on the places that I've visited. So I don't really truly cook like southern southern, but I definitely keep my southern spin on it. What are some of your influences? Well, for instance, um, I first learned to make a homemade corn tortilla from a lady in Panama who did not speak. We didn't speak each other's language, but we smiled in the kitchen, had fun in the kitchen, and she taught me to make homemade corn tortillas the Panamanian way. Um, so every time I make fish tacos, I think about going fishing, growing up, um, you know, in Biloxi or South Mississippi. And then I think about making um, tacos in Panama with um, a sweet little lady um, that taught me to make, make corn tortillas. So it's, it's experiences like traveling to Panama and learning that. Um, you know, I've traveled to New Zealand and I learned to cook lamb there really well. Um, so I love to make a homemade lamb ravioli. It's um, and put a southern rustic spin on that. Um, you know, through through traveling to Costa Rica, I love to make Costa Rican bowls. Oh, wow. um, and then in the south, you know, I I love to make a healthy fried chicken. I know that wasn't the most popular thing on the show, but um, <laughs> I love to make a healthy fried chicken, and I do a healthy southern fried chicken and waffles. That's actually very um, nutritious and good for your body. Um, it definitely, I think, people say, how do you maintain being so busy and you know keep up just with everything and I and I truly believe 100% it is through my diet and through rest and finding a healthy balance of a family rest good nutrition and um just you know you have to take care of yourself at the end of the day so I, I definitely attribute a lot of that to to my healthy diet well you know once you look at it as being fuel as opposed to being i guess something you habitually do it uh, you kind of change your perspective on things with that. Absolutely, I had a really dear friend um, in high school that um, his mother had a lot of food allergies. They were from California, 
and she taught me about how food makes your body feel. Um, so very early on in life, I, I realized that food was fuel for the body and not just something you do when you're hungry. And so thankfully for that, that sweet lady, she sparked a, a fire in me at, at a very young age to start being very interested in how food is fuel for your body. And so that's what I love to teach people now is how to live a healthier life um, through baby steps. You, you can't make a hundred changes in a, in a in a month and expect yourself to be able to keep up with that. But it's it's daily habits that you teach yourself to slowly become build a confidence in yourself that you can do it and you can live a healthy lifestyle. So that that's my passion. How do you make a healthy fried chicken? I to make a healthy fried chicken, first of all, I bake it in the oven and I use a panko crust. I use fresh lemon zest. Um, I soak it in either almond milk usually um, instead of a dairy milk because. Some people that I cook for have dairy allergies. So I first soak the chicken in almond milk, and then I use a panko light breading on it, actually, with a little lemon zest, a little cayenne to give it a lot of fresh um, freshness. I bring in the herbs. So I use fresh herbs from from the garden, and um, I bake it in the oven, um, and it's delicious. It's tender, it's moist, and it's got a crisp to it. So it's, it's not your traditional thick fried chicken, but it is a fried chicken, and even children love it. So... Um, that's how I make my healthy fried chicken. That sounds really good. Yeah, it, it it really is yummy. Now, before you got on the show, did you watch MasterChef? I have to be honest. I run around so much that um, I don't get to watch a lot of television. Um, yes, I had um, I had watched the show before, but I wasn't just a every Wednesday night in front of the TV when MasterChef came on. Because, I mean, to be honest, my life, I'm never at home sitting down at 7 o'clock. Oh, now, sure. I am right now sitting down at 7 o'clock every Wednesday night watching MasterChef. I definitely go back and watch reruns, and I wasn't as prompt as watching at 7 o'clock, but I, I definitely have always enjoyed watching the show and learning from Chef Ramsey and Christina Tosi and some of the past judges. I, most of the time, I'm, when I'm cooking in the kitchen, if my kids aren't here, I have one of the cooking stations on. So that's, that's what I do when I get my Katie time is, is just to get to watch a good cooking show like MasterChef. That's my relaxed time. While I'm cooking, I do that. My wife watches, no joke, food shows all the live long day. And uh, <laughs> I'm a fan of Giada, you know, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> well, what was what was it like the first time you saw yourself on television? You know, it. you don't know. You've been in the kitchen for... You basically have 16-hour days. And um, the show is only shown for an hour. And we don't know as contestants what they're going to show out of those 16 hours. So it's kind of, it's so exciting just kind of like sitting back going, oh my gosh, are they going to show this? Are they going to show that? Or how is this going to look? And it's um, amazing just seeing your um, your friends from the show, you know, getting to live that out each week. But, you know, the first time I was, I was a little nervous, but I had such a good support group um, through watching each of the shows. Um, I've had friends that hosted um, each week. Um, and gotten a, a a fun party together for all of us to watch it. That it was just so much excitement in the room. It was hard to let myself really get nervous. You know, I, I tried to really stay true to who I was when I was when I was there, whether it was in the kitchen or it was outside of the kitchen. And so I knew that 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 would shine through ultimately. Um, that I was just being me. Yeah, sometimes I say things that are silly or, you know, I mess up. But to me, that's real life and. You know, people mess up in life every day. If if people think for a second that there's one of us that that doesn't mess up, then I need to meet that person. So I feel like I'm I'm more of a testimony to people when when they can see things like me having a weak moment of the fried chicken, but staying true to myself, and then rebounding with um, one of the best curry Chef Edward Lee had ever tasted. So I try to just take it as a journey, knowing that in my weak moments I could teach especially children, that when they go through something hard, whether it's sports or school, to keep trying, that um, on the other side of that valley is, is, a, is a real high mountain. And um, they'll be stronger in the end and a best version of themselves through going through the difficult times. So I tried to kind of put it all in perspective a little bit and just be thankful for the opportunity to be there and try to smile through the hard and the easy times. You know, I'm sure they had thousands of people audition. So how did you end up on the show? Well, I, um, in my busy life, I, um, my friend had sent me a text message of the, my sweet friend Cameron had sent me a text message of the application form. And me and my busy self, I was like, 
there is no reason in me even sitting down and filling this application out. I will never get to be on that show. So me and my busyness, I just, I didn't fill it out. And I'd actually um, started cooking at um, Shine Cafe and one of my dear friends, Elizabeth Gregg, had brought in some fresh flowers. Well, it had ragweed in it. And so for about a week, I had a terrible cough. I couldn't sleep at night. So, of course, what did I do? I got on my phone and I started going through text messages and pictures and, you know, you name it. And I came across the application and I was like, well, I can't sleep. I might as well just fill out this application. Why not? So I filled it out. So the next day I went into the cafe. Of course, my phone was dead because I'd been on it all night. And um, I got back out to the car to go pick up my kids from school. And I had like eight missed calls from L.A. And oh, wow. I called back. I was nervous. I was like, oh, my gosh, why are they like they're actually calling me? It's Master Chef. So they called me and said, Katie, we want to know if you can cook for us tomorrow in Jackson, Mississippi. I was like, tomorrow? They were like, yes, um, we're going to be in Jackson, Mississippi tomorrow. And I was like, well, yeah. And, and they said, well, we put you in the VIP group from your um, application that you sent in. And we, whatever time you can be here, you don't have to wait in line. You can just cook for us. And I was like, oh, gosh, okay, that's, that's even better. You're making it easy on me. Um, so I got there and I went in and I cooked for them. And um, I made fresh Alaskan salmon burgers with a sweet potato curry fries and a side of kale and quinoa salad and they loved it and they passed me on to round two and we had interviews and more cooking and then they're like we well, got to come back tomorrow and that process lasted months I went through cooking and interviews and psych exams <laughs> I don't know if that means that I'm crazy because I passed the psychic gram or that I'm normal I don't know I still haven't figured that one out that they would take me <laughs> on the show but um so 22,000 people auditioned nationwide and they brought 80 of us out to LA and um I went out in January. 80 of us were brought out, 40 of us made the show, and it's, the show started out with 40 cooks vying for 20 white aprons, and there I was still in just disbelief that I was actually living out a a, a dream of being in the Master Chef kitchen. I, I really still can't believe that I had such an incredible opportunity to do that. I, I still feel like I should pinch myself. <laughs> I feel like I'm living in Katie land. Like, is this true, or am I going to wake up from this dream? But anyway, I hope that answered your question. Yes. <laughs> Katie Land. I like that. Katie Land. It's Katie a good Land. place. You just escape <laughs> to it sometimes. It and sounds it like it. life so much better. I think my, if I had like a Katie Land app on my phone, I travel all the time. And if I had a Katie Land app like where I could eat and eat sensibly and not just eat junk all the time, yeah. it probably would be going a lot better right now. Absolutely. It, hey, it's never bad to go into that land. It makes you happy. I'm all about making people happy. So. Okay, you know, whatever little land that is for you, just just go to it. <laughs> just escape. Just escape. It's fairy tale land, but hey, it's like me having a goat farm one day. I, I tell myself in my head, I'm gonna have it. Are you gonna have, wait, wait. You're gonna have a goat farm one day? Yeah, goat, I want a goat farm. Yep. Did they have goats on your farm growing up? No, but I love goats. I just I want to have a goat farm. I want to have goat cheese and goat milk, and yeah, I want to have a little goat farm. And I'm also gonna have the little food truck with a big heart. That's going to be the name of it, and I'm going to travel, and I already see it. It's, like, in my list of to-do things. It's going to happen. It, I mean, I've always been taught if you think positively and, and you dream it up, if you work hard enough, it can come true, right? I hope so. I, I hope, hope it so. does. The little food truck with a big heart coming to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And you have, <laughs> yeah, you have just goats just uh, taking orders and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that the food truck will be at the goat farm, but maybe I could have, like, a, a petting day at the goat farm or something. Yeah. So anyway, those are my little Katie Land ideas. I'm for it, Katie. I'm for it. <laughs> Thanks. You obviously got to spend a lot of time with the with the rest of the cast. Uh, it, it, was there kind of a camaraderie developed between you and the other contestants? You know, I've n- I've never experienced quite a um, eclectic group of individuals as on the cast of Master Chef. Even the top eighty was even more eclectic. Absolutely. You know, on a lot of teams. You know, there can be animosity or there can be, um, you know, you've got like one that drives everybody crazy or you've got, you know, the bossy one. But I, I can say all in all, I mean, we had a pretty outstanding group in the MasterChef kitchen. Um, everyone very eager to learn, which always makes me happy because that, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. If you're eager to learn, then to me, that's just a step in the right direction. Um, I'm all about someone that's eager to learn. So that was definitely like, such a nice feeling to have everyone there truly wanting to better themselves as a home cook. Um, now, I did have some really close friends on the show. Um, I and Terry, um, he is just absolutely makes me smile. 
I don't know if you've been watching, but, but Terry was just an incredible guy, just a huge personality and like a big heart and just loved everyone on the show and just an absolutely great cook. Andrea that left last week or actually the week before, she was just a spunky, tenacious, just full of life, just um, go get her. I just, uh, I, I loved getting, getting to know Andrea. Um, Diamond was actually my roommate until the top 20 when we got a room actually to ourselves. And she's just a sweetheart. And then Tenoria and I still talk weekly. We are complete opposite ends of the spectrum as far as cooking. I mean, I think Tenoria used 10 sticks of butter in every single dish she made. <laughs> um, they were all delicious, but definitely like heart attack waiting to happen. But I mean, they, I told her, I was like, anytime you want to move down to South Mississippi, I could pack out a restaurant for you. Oh, absolutely. She, uh, yeah. So Tenoria is just, a, um, she's a, she's a special person. Um, I, I really enjoyed her, but I, I really got along with, you know, 99% of the time it was, you know, I'm, I'm a people person and I want everybody to be happy and, you know, always try my best to make everybody feel comfortable. So I tried to show a little Mississippi hospitality to everybody. You know, it gets the, to me, the opportunity was to, to do your best to grow and definitely the competitive side for me is to never beat someone because they messed up, but beat someone when I'm not, I'm at my absolute best and they're at their absolute best. And so that's kind of how I went into the competition. I never wished anyone ill will or to, to mess up. I truly wanted them to do their best, but my best just to be a little better. <laughs> so I tried to, to be that way throughout throughout the competition and stay true to who Katie is. So, what, What's been the biggest challenge for you competing on the show? I would probably say if I had two challenges. Number one, just absolutely being away from your children is so difficult. You know, you get one phone call a week for 10 minutes to your family. So, oh, wow. so that was definitely hard. Um, there's, you don't have a phone there. You don't have email. You don't have a computer. You don't have access at all to the outside world. So um, that was like, it's like a nice break to be disengaged from everything because you can totally focus on what you're there to do, which is to cook. But as a mother, it's hard to be away from, from your babies for that long and not really know exactly how they're doing. Second of all, I would have to say probably for me because – I do have such a heart for teaching people to cook healthy that that's not necessarily what Gordon Ramsay's looking for in the next Master Chef to be able to stay true to Katie and put my healthy spin on things but still be the competitor that I am in the kitchen. That was probably the trickiest part for me to try to find that balance of staying true to me but being a true competitor in the kitchen. That was difficult. The other thing that was difficult for me was just the interview part while you're cooking, I, I mean, I've always been taught that you, you look at who you're speaking to and you carry on a conversation looking at them in the eyes and you can't do that when you're, when you're on the time crunch in the MasterChef kitchen. So I had to learn to, to cook and, and kind of disengage with who you're speaking to, but also answer the questions. So those are probably the three, the three toughest things. You mentioned it a little earlier, but Gordon Ramsay kind of has a reputation that precedes himself and you obviously didn't, didn't find him to be as, uh, as difficult as he appears to be on television. He definitely, and he's probably even more difficult than he appears on television. But to me, I knew his heart. I've never in my life met someone that has done what, like he's done, his thing is cooking, whether it's someone, you know, playing baseball or it's a cook or whatever it is. I've never met someone that has been a part of what they love as long as he has and still so passionate for it. I mean, he just exuberates this, this heart for cooking and wanting to see the best in other people that truly have a heart for cooking. And for me, I took it as I, like I said earlier, like, like a coach in sports, they push you to greatness. They push you to seek out your best self. And until you're pushed on, you know, the edge of the chair, you're not really living on the edge in the kitchen. Um, and so he just pushed a greatness and I, and I saw that from the beginning. So I, re I really respected that. And I knew when he was being hard on me, it was only because he knew I had more in me. And yes, he, he definitely is hard. It's never hard, um, you know, putting your whole heart out there and a hundred percent effort out there and, and it not being quite good enough. But, um, I just try to take it as truly like an opportunity of a lifetime. I mean, I couldn't pay enough money. I don't think to even get him to come teach me one cooking class in my, in my house in Mississippi, but I got to spend every day in the master chef kitchen getting both positive feedback and, and negative feedback from him, which created a, a stronger cook in myself. Well, were there some things that you obviously you learned a lot from being on the show, but what, what did you really learn uh, about the culinary arts that you might not have known before? Oh, wow. I mean, 
it, it's a lot harder than most people think, first of all. I mean, being, being a chef is, is not easy work. I mean, it's definitely you put time and sweat and tears into becoming becoming a great chef. And, and I, I'm not there. I'm, it's a constant pushing yourself to, to be the best, to learn, to grow. It's not a, um, an end point you get to. You know, Gordon Ramsay's not where he's at from, you know, just becoming great overnight you push yourself daily to become your new best the next day and to learn something and to know that through the mistakes you make of trying something new, you become stronger in the kitchen. It's just like, you know, the same applies to life. I definitely know that it's where I want to be. I mean, the show really reinforced to me that cooking's not what I just thought I loved. I, I know it's what I love. And I know that speaking to people on how foods affect you and your body is my passion. And I just feel so blessed to have had that opportunity to really reinforce to me that, that I'm, I'm truly doing um, what I'm called to do. I just have the utmost respect for, for anyone that, whether it's management or uh, a head chef or an assistant for their position that they play in a kitchen. And, and it starts not just there, but it wouldn't be possible without the farmers. Um, getting, to, getting to go out and do the team challenge and cook for the 101 farmers you know, it brought me back to my days in Brookhaven, getting to go to my grandparents' farm. And, and without farmers, we couldn't do what we do um, as cooks. So it just brought, um, it really just reiterated things that maybe I, I knew, but really brought it to face value, that it, that it starts on the farm and that it takes a team of people to create beautiful meals and not, not just one person. How did you handle it when the judges were critical of your dish? You know, each time it was a little different. On on the fried chicken challenge, I think I I was probably took it a little more personal because I knew what I they really had said to put yourself on a plate and me on a plate of fried chicken is doing a healthy fried chicken. So um, they were like, "Are the people in Mississippi disappointed in you?" And for me, it's like absolutely not. I've I've helped change the lives of so many for the better by teaching them to make things that are staples in the South, but cre- recreating them into something healthy. So I think I probably. For me on that one, it was um, I stayed true to who I was, so I, w- I was a little bit I was I was okay with that I was critiqued so harshly, but I probably took it a little more personal. With the bib and bop challenge, I did not have a I mean I I did not know what bib and bop was. I mean I think that was pretty clear, but um I still trade true to myself on that because I, I chose a, a black forbidden rice instead of a you know a traditional white sushi rice. Now had I have known or had I ever made bib and bop before, I would have known. You know, even me trying to be a healthy cook, I shouldn't have done the black rice because it just it doesn't work the same way as as the white rice in a traditional bibimbap dish. So it was funny because I actually walked up to the um to the front to the judges on the bibimbap challenge, like so proud of my dish. I mean, it was like one of those moments where like I did so good, like I am so happy just to get like your feet completely knocked out from under you. So that was definitely um. I really felt like all elements of that dish tasted really well and that I that I did a, a good job on it. And it, and that one kind of caught me off guard a little bit. But all in all, I was there to, to learn to, to become a better cook. And definitely through the hard times, it taught me to um, to focus more and to really just bring everything I had to the table. Because you can, you can see by last the last episode with Andrea going home, I mean, some really wonderful cooks go home before you think it might be their turn. Like every moment in that kitchen matters it just brought a realness to to the kitchen and i did think that that dish looked like something that you would eat at the beach it looked like something you'd come back kind of re-energize yourself with after a long day at the beach yeah i I really um i mean i i love the colors and i love you know i love black rice it's a you know on the the challenge right before that the farmer's challenge i actually had made a delicious black rice that the judges loved as an accompaniment to our pork chop and so it, it wasn't that the black rice wasn't good. It was just it doesn't work with bib and bop. <laughs> so it, it absolutely is something that that I make for my family. My girls love it. And it's just the principle of bib and bop is really small bites, not a huge bite apple. And, you know, I, I learned my lesson on that one. But I was there to learn. So, um, you know, you get the good with the bad. And and you have, you have two choices. You can either put a smile on your face and try harder the next time and bring everything you've got or quit. And. I would, I would never teach my girls back home to give up when you face something hard. You try harder and you work harder and you study harder, and um, eventually that hard work will pay off. Well, what has the response been back home in Mississippi in the community? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely more support than I ever even think I deserve. 
I, I, I wish I had uh, more time in my day that I could go around and thank every person that has been so supportive of me from, from local businesses to friends to people I don't know, writing the letters to children that just think I'm the, you know, the most wonderful thing in the world to, to my family, my kids for allowing me to leave and the, the friends and family I had that took care of them while I was gone. I mean, absolutely. I, I couldn't ask for a better, for a better welcome home from, from Master Chef, from my Hattiesburg family, um, from the university to businesses. I mean, it's really just been an incredible, just humbling, just when I think about it, it literally will bring tears to my eyes because it, I couldn't ask for a more supportive network here in Hattiesburg. Well, it's, it's a great time to be a Southern Miss alum. I mean, you know, you get Tori Bowie out winning Olympic medals. I'm, you know? Oh, my goodness. I mean, she was she's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I, I, I can't I hope I get to meet her one day. I hope I do, too. I hope I do, too. <laughs> Uh, well, did you ever get to meet? There was another Southern Miss alum that was on the show. That was a season one winner, Whitney Miller. Whitney now, Miller. Have you met Whitney precious. yet? I have met Whitney, and I love her sister that has a local business here in Hattiesburg. She, I went to her book signing right before I actually even auditioned for Master Chef, and um, I went to her book signing when she had it here in Hattiesburg, and. She, we were talking about my love for cooking, and her sister, Britton, was telling her that, you know, all the things that I love to do cooking. And she looked at me, and she was like, you need to try out for MasterChef. You would be perfect. And um, little did she know that there I would be. But um, what an encourager. What an amazing example to have, you know, a MasterChef winner um, that represents USM so proudly. I mean, she is just, she's a sweetheart, I mean, through and through, and just loves people and loves life and is a great cook and example to all she meets, I, I definitely could spend more time with her in the kitchen. I would love to. She doesn't look like she would be the pastry princess. She's a she's 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 the pastry princess for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I might need to take some classes from her. Yeah, she she grew up cooking that true Southern food like my grandmother always made, but that's what she stuck to. Um, is that like true? Just make your grandmother proud. I mean, just bring a smile to your face when 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 she puts it in front of you. But um, yeah, I'm. I'm I'm so proud of all that that Whitney has done and and just the the bright light that she has shown on the university and on Hattiesburg and she does Mississippi proud for sure. Well, this Wednesday, we've got new episodes of MasterChef coming back on Fox Wednesday, August 24th. Uh yes. 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central as you continue your quest for the MasterChef title and the $250,000 grand prize. Any final words for your fans out there? For my fans out there, I just want to say thank you for all you've done to support me through this amazing adventure. Keep following me at chefkatiedixon.com. I will have some, some new updates for you guys to learn some of the things that I got to enjoy making on the show. Keep pushing whatever it is in life. Dream. Dream big and reach for those goals. And I promise if you reach for the, for the moon, you're going to fall on a star. And it's going to be a bright star. And I wish the best to each and every one of you. Katie. Dixon, ladies and gentlemen, you can catch Katie on Season 7 of MasterChef, that's this season. New episodes begin Wednesday night, August the 24th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Catch Katie in action, watch her in competition in the MasterChef kitchen. If you want to take an adventure to Katie Land, as she calls it, go to ChefKatieDixon.com, C-H-E-F-K-A-T-I-E. D-I-X-O-N dot com and chef at Chef Katie Dixon on Twitter. You can follow MasterChef at MasterChef on Fox on Twitter and Chef Katie Dixon on Facebook as well. She has a, a Facebook page set up to keep up with what's going on with her. If you want to keep up with this podcast, follow us on Twitter at Airing It Out A-R-R-I-N-G-I-T-O-U-T If you want to follow me at Jamie underscore Arrington also, you can find us on Facebook, airing it out, as well as Jamie Arrington Comedy. If you're a Southern Miss fan listening to this, because I know there are some Southern Miss fans that will be listening because Katie is on the program, you can check out my Southern Miss related podcast at supertalk.fm in the on demand or in the podcast section. There's a gold button that says To the Top Talk. I talk about Southern Miss each and every week on the Super Talk Mississippi Network, so be sure you check that out as well. As far as my next comedy show, it will be at Brewski's in Hattiesburg on Thursday, September the 22nd. It's going to be a month away. 8 p.m., we've got the Sklar Brothers, the same Sklar Brothers you've seen on 
cheap seats on ESPN Classic. You've seen them on ESPN. You've seen them hosting for Jim Rome sometimes. They're going to be at Brewski's in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So if you're in the region, come out to that show. Tickets are $25 in advance, and they are $30 at the door. Also, a comedian that's been to Hattiesburg a few times, Todd Berry, announced the sale of his new book. It's going to be available in March, and it will be called Thank You for Coming to Hattiesburg. It's kind of a a journey when he was traveling through different parts of the country. He got a book deal, so he documented it, and it's going to be out in print next year in 2017. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Keep up with Katie. Let's cheer her on. Hopefully, she can get the the victory and get that, that money prize. But we'll see you next episode right back here at Airing It Out. You guys take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time.